My name is David Dalton. I'm here at the NCOM Nanosystems Laboratory at The Ohio State University to talk a little bit about Lakeshore's prototype terahertz frequency materials characterization platform. Uh, we think this is a good turnkey solution for materials characterization at terahertz frequencies. Uh, and the turnkey means to us that we're integrating three really important components of doing these measurements. We're integrating terahertz frequency optical characterization with magnetic field, high magnetic fields, and cryogenic temperatures, all in one, one package. Um, the system consists of a nine Tesla uh, high magnetic field uh, cryostat, a terahertz sample insert, uh, and a console with software control of instrumentation to control all three of those parameters, the terahertz, the magnetic field, and temperature. In conventional terahertz measurements at cryogenic temperatures, steering mirrors and lenses are required to, to focus terahertz frequency light onto your sample to do your measurement. So this is the uh, sample environment for the terahertz frequency materials characterization system. And the first thing that you'll, you'll notice about the, this sample space is its size. So the overall dimension uh, is actually a little over one inch in diameter. And the reason for that is it needs to fit inside a homogeneous magnetic field environment. So the small diameters allows us to get higher fields um, with more uniformity of that field across the sample space. Basic components that you're going to see, uh, see here are the terahertz emitter, the terahertz detector, and the sample tray. Terahertz frequency light is uh, passed from the emitter through the sample to the detector for our transmission measurements. Both the emitter and the detector are cryogenically compatible. And so they're sitting inside of a four Kelvin, a 300 Kelvin uh, flow cryostat. Uh, and so they need to be able to, both the emitter and detector need to operate uh, at those temperatures and in the nine Tesla magnetic fields. Terahertz frequency transmission measurements consist of three segments. Transmission through the sample, a reference measurement without the sample, and a measure of the detector's noise floor. So what we've designed into our system is the ability to rotate the sample tray. So you're able to take a sample measurement, rotate the tray, take a reference measurement without a sample between the emitter and detector, and then block the transmission between the emitter and detector to get a measure of the noise level of your detector. Right, so we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, sample mounting uh, in the terahertz insert. So as we've mentioned, uh, this is a very confined space due to the uh, insertion of the insert into, a, into the bore of a magnet. Um, so this is a typical sample size. It's a 10 by 10 millimeter uh, square of material. And so that's a typical substrate size that a lot of uh, researchers are going to be using when they're developing new materials. Uh, we can accommodate smaller samples than this uh, down to about 5 by 5 millimeters, but there is going to be some loss of signal if we use smaller samples. Um, and because of size constraints, we won't really be able to accommodate samples too much larger than this uh, in our sample environment. Um, also due to the nature of the, the varying degrees of different kinds of materials that are, are used, uh, we decided to not use sample clips in the environment. One, because they're, uh, they add some size and bulk to the, to the insert, and two, because a lot of materials that are used uh, by researchers are actually quite brittle, and so a, a universal sample clamp is, uh, can be detrimental to a large number of different kinds of samples. Uh, so the technique that we use for uh, for sample mounting actually is just a little bit of uh, rubber adhesive and so this is just a common adhesive. It's cryogenically compatible. It hardens up uh, nicely uh, and its purpose is really just to hold the sample in place. And so the sample is going to be cooled by, uh, by vapor and so we're not really using any conductive cooling uh, to get the sample to temperature. And so all we really need is a, a little bit of adhesive uh, to hold that sample in place uh, while we do our uh, stick transfer. Uh, into the into the cryostat, okay? And so sample uh, mounting is, is quite straightforward. We'll start with a little bit of rubber adhesive on the end of uh, a Q-tip. We want to mount a little bit of adhesive in the corners of the sample holder. Okay. We will grab a, the sample with a pair of tweezers. There is a slot for the sample to slide into. Grab 
So it's a, a Q-tip to press down on the top of the sample and our sample's mounted.